Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome into another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melvin Law Gator Studios. There were votes that came in on whether to change the name of the show, but we're going to stay with another. It, it, it wasn't overwhelming, let's put it that way. It was kind of 50-50. Um, Coach Spurrier will be on in just a little bit, and then we'll have uh, Robbie Andrew, which we always love having Robbie Andrew for Yes, Nowhere, Maybe. Uh, next week, or I'm sorry, Thursday, Brandon Spikes is set to join us. He's definitely going to join us. Um, we're looking forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun. We're not going to really talk that much about what's going on now because, look, he's restricted in a way. He's a volunteer coach. But we're going to talk about Brandon Spikes, a player, and what how good a player he was. And we'll, we'll try to get some happy things going here on this show. Uh, next Monday, Coach Spurrier will not be here because he will be at the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony, and then he goes from there to the Heisman, so he'll be gone all week. Uh, we'll have another guest for you. I haven't figured out who it's going to be yet, but we'll, we'll get somebody. And then on Thursday, Chris Harry is going to join us to talk a little Gator basketball. Um, so we got a, a lot of stuff going on. We're trying to set up the whole holidays. Obviously, we're not doing a show Christmas Day. I'm not that committed. I'm committed. We did 300 shows. Okay, this is 301, but I'm not that committed that I'm going to do a show on Christmas Day. All right, let us get to our process service of Gainesville. Starting five, brought to you, as always, by the process service of Gainesville. We love what they're doing for us. And I will say this, guys, all of you advertisers out there who I love so much, who have been so great to us, just because football season ended doesn't mean we're not going to keep doing a podcast and not keep having great guests. We will. And uh, stay with us. We're going to keep doing great things. All right. Let's get to our process service of Gainesville starting five. Number one was the weirdness I felt this morning. I didn't feel it yesterday. Yesterday was a day to work and do stuff. And I ended up going and watching some NFL games and stuff. But it was a weird feeling because football season's over. And for me, it is over. I mean, I don't have to watch the Gators play anymore. It, it, it was very difficult at times, and yet it was they kept giving you hope. So there was that moment. There were moments where you went, I think they can win this game. I think they're going to win this game. I didn't think they were going to win. I didn't pick them to win. I think they're going to win this game. And then they'd lose. And it was very frustrating. Um, I don't know if it wasn't. The question I have for Gator fans, and maybe you, I, I know I don't get a lot of response when I ask questions on the air on the podcast. Uh, is this a low point? Is this the bottom right here? Because you can say, oh, well, oh, 10 and one. No, next year they went eight and four. The previous year was pretty bad with Doug Dickey, but um, this may be the low point. You hope it's a low point for Florida to go five and seven. Um, but I don't know that it is. I can't answer that question. I do know that the Billy Napier is going to be the coach next year. I do know that um, it's there's a lot of bad feelings about what's going on here. Um, but it's, I mean, this team just kept giving you hope and then taking it away, snatching it, almost like you were holding a fish up and it just jumped up and grabbed it and said, nah, no fish for you. Um, and it was a weird feeling. That because our I, I say this all the time and it's at least it's that way for me. College football seasons fly by, man. I hate the way they fly by, but they do. They do. You know why they do? Because they're so much fun. You can't wait to get to the weekend. That's why they fly by. You know what doesn't fly by? The summer. The summer goes slow. Eh, I got nothing to watch. I got nothing to do. That that's me, okay? But it was so weird to wake up this morning and go. I got a lot of things I don't have to do anymore, <laughs> uh, but I want. I wish I was still doing them. I wish I had a bowl game to get ready for. Anyway, that was my take on on uh, where I was today. Uh, number two is I'm I'm sorry, but I'm going to give you bad stats, and the only reason I'm giving you bad stats is because this was another bad team at the University of Florida. The worst stat of all um, is that, and I looked this up. 
before the game, just so I would have it. Florida is, this is the first time in Florida football history the Gators have lost seven games in three straight years. Never happened before. Never. Not once. Um, again, there were a lot of years when they played eight or nine games, and even in the modern era, well, I consider the modern era to be 1962. Because that, that's the first game I went to. That's when I really became aware of Florida football. And that's what my star of the modern era is going to be, and I don't care what anybody says. 1962. All right, since that time, uh, you didn't see a lot of losing seasons. How many? Eight. Eight losing seasons since 1962. Three of them the last three years. Sad. It really is sad. Uh, this is the – somebody – I got an a email from Ryan who wanted to know if this is the first time Florida had ever lost five games in a row or one of the last time they did. And I go, dude, this is what we do now. Three times in the last 11 years, they've lost five games in a row in a season. Something's got to change, man. And I don't think it's the head coach right now, but something's got to change. I don't know if it's – like we were, Coach Spurry and I were talking uh, the other day about this. When uh, Lions get thrown out of the game for spitting, which I mean, I can't, I've never spit in my life at anybody. I've spit on the sidewalk, never at, any, at anybody. Um, but when that happens, you see him come off the field and um, Billy Napier is talking to him like a father, which in a way you admire that. But there's also part of you that wants to just yell at you. You want to see him yelling at him. You want to see him go McElwain on Kelvin Taylor on him. But no, no, you can't do that because they might get in the portal if they get yelled at. So where we're living in. We'll ask Coach Spurrier about that as well. Uh, but look, the bottom line is I, I've talked about this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Billy Napier's not going anywhere, but the heat is officially on now. You lose your last five games, you go five and seven, you become the first program at Florida history to lose, to have losing records. Now, he only had two of them, but Mullen had one. Um, the heat is definitely on for this season. And I, I'll, I'll talk more down the road about the schedule for next season, but the heat is on. You cannot go five and seven next year. I believed he had four years. I don't believe that anymore. I believe he's got a third year. I'm not saying he's got to win a lot. He's got to at least get this program going in the right direction. Penalties, stupid penalties, spitting penalties. Can't have that anymore. It's got to stop. He's got to get it uh, resolved. Um, but the heat is definitely on. I've, I've, Argued against the heat is on him because I always believe in there's a difference between real heat and perceived heat. And but I think the real heat is on now. He's lost a lot of people in the last couple of weeks. People that matter. He better win. He, and I'm not saying he's got to win a lot, but he better win this year. And he better can make things start feeling like you're going the right direction. Right now, to be honest with you, they aren't going the right direction. Are they getting better players? Yes. Do they have a good recruiting class supposedly to come in? Yes. But is, are things going the right direction as a, on the field? No, they aren't. All right, uh, number three, uh, it was nice to see the defense finally show up for a game. Uh, again, they were going against a backup quarterback, but they made life miserable for him. And he had said, oh, I played in front of 10,000 people in high school. I can handle the swamp. Well, he didn't. He didn't handle the swamp early, and the, and the swamp got in his head, and they they did a great job, you fans that showed up. I mean, I give you credit. Uh, nine sellouts this, in the last two years for losing teams. The fans are, are, are there. They And I, I want to – I just – I don't want to go too far with this, but I think what needs to happen at the swamp is they need to make it better but they don't need to spend $400,000. Look, I know there are things they're going to have to do, like rails because of uh, ADA and everything like that, once you touch one thing in the bowl. But it, I don't – look, fans are willing to go. 
We've seen that. Nine sellouts in the last two years. They're willing to put up with this crappy stadium and, the, and how uncomfortable you are. They stand most of the game anyway. I just think they need to reexamine that. That's just my opinion. Uh, they need to re-examine spending $400 million when you're already losing money and you're kind of in a little deficit here and you need to kind of get out of that. Instead of spending $400 million, spend $100 million and just make it nicer and say it's still going to be the swamp. That's my opinion now. I was the guy yelling and screaming, you guys don't get it. You can't get fans to come to the games anymore because... They, they're not comfortable. Well, guess what? They came. They came last year. They came this year. Nine sellouts. Um, anyway, it is what it is. All right, let's, uh, and again, I'm not going to address all the discipline issues. That's up to him to, to address. And if he doesn't address them and doesn't straighten them out, he'll be looking for a job. Billy Napier. I don't even, I don't, I'm not even going to do the, the stupid thing that people do all the time, which is to say, you know, I like Billy Napier, but I'm not going to do that. I I don't really know Billy Napier. I, I It's hard for me to say I like him. I, I like a lot of the things he's doing. I like a lot of the things he's doing off the field. But he better start winning or he's going to be gone. And I, I would hate that. It would make me sad. And, I, again, I don't think – for Florida to fire him today would be the dumbest thing they could do. Um, I'm not saying because of the recruiting class. I'm saying because, you know, you're right back in the hole. You've dug the hole even deeper. But if he doesn't, if we don't see improvement next year, you're in your third year with all your players, you're on the hot seat. Okay. Uh, number four. And again, I, I, my apologies to Todd Golden. Um, but I don't talk about basketball. But look, basketball is going to dominate what we talk about for the next few months. We know that. Um, but I did want to at least bring them up. That was, I mean, I if I had gone to Todd Golden on Friday morning and said, you're going to score 91 tonight against uh, Baylor, he would have said, oh, yeah, let's get the champagne out. Um, but 91 wasn't enough. They scored 95. Yeah, I, I liked I loved watching the game because nobody missed and certainly they didn't miss and Florida's defense has got to pick up. This team has a chance to be good. There's no doubt about it. When you score 91 against Baylor, that's good. Um, we'll see where it goes from here. And obviously, the game when again Wednesday against Wake Forest is a big one. And they've got a, a couple of more games in the non-con, but they they need to kind of do. I think they need two more big wins in the non-conference schedule, and they'll be okay. Because, like, when you get into conference play, your goal is to get to at, at least to win half. And if if you've done good enough in the non-con, you're going to get into the tournament. And that's really what it's all about right now for Florida. And hopefully, they get Micah Hanglot back, and and that'll make a difference. All right. Finally, number five on the process service of Gainesville, starting five. Volleyball hosting, um, which is cool. I'm happy for Mary that she's able to host with a team that just didn't seem to be able to get, overcome that Alyssa Stuckey injury, which is the worst injury of all time, I guess, because it totally deflated this team. Um, they're hosting um, and, they, and they're hosting uh, Florida Gulf Coast, which at first I look at it and I go, oh. 26 and 6, lost one game in their conference. I go, yeah. Either good enough to get through the first weekend or not. Who knows? Uh, but I'm just glad they get to host and Thursday and Friday, and we'll try to get out to at least the uh, at least one of those matches. But good for Florida they get to host. I mean, it's been a rough, tough season, probably the hardest season Mary Wise has ever had. So that's going to do it for our process service of Gainesville starting five. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the legend. A man who was on the field, not Tim Tebow, but Steve Spurrier, here on another Dilly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Process Service of Gainesville offers a rapid turnaround on affidavits of service for Gator lawyers locally and nationwide. Our friend Scott Hart offers immediate responses on status requests and is a member of NAPS and FAPS, and he has been a part of the community for almost two decades. 
need service, call Process Service of Gainesville at 407-697-9592 or email shartgators, that's G-H-T-R, at yahoo.com. And make sure you ask about the paralegal legal secretary bonus program. The Kiara Grace Foundation proudly presents an evening with Tim Tebow. Thursday, November 30th at the Touchdown Terrace at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Experience a once-in-a-lifetime VIP meet and greet with Tim. Hear his heartfelt stories and his unyielding dedication to the most vulnerable. With your support, we can extend the reach of the Kiara Grace Foundation to save precious lives in Latin America. Get your ticket before they sell out. Don't miss your chance to meet Tim Tebow, be inspired, and make a tangible difference. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another Duly Noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Like this? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we, before it was a call ahead, carry out, quick service. Uh, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where um, you know you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Okay, and welcome in to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan mm-hmm. MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Mm-hmm. And Meldon Law, of course, brings you the HBC mm-hmm. every Monday, and we appreciate him. He won't be with us next Monday because mm-hmm. guess he's got to go to the Heisman uh, and the Hall of Fame stuff, right? Yeah, now. next Monday night in Vegas, uh, they have the College Football Hall of Fame. And, of course, Tim Tebow is in, yep. being inducted this year. It was a nice little... Uh, yeah, how cool was that? Yeah, was it? Uh, you get pretty loud there. Quarter. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was pretty loud. Yeah, I knew Tim would get a, a huge ovation. And oh, he, they were cheering. He for certainly you, did. Coach. Come on. He gave me a little cheer the he one did. time. <laughs> they finally said presented by another Hall of Famer, Steve Spurrier. <laughs> so I got a little cheer there, uh, but it was his time to get the ovation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously not the result Florida wanted, but I mean they played hard. That's one thing about this team. I've never said. These guys quit. I've seen mm-hmm. Gator teams quit in the past. This team has not quit. They played their butts off, mm-hmm. just weren't efficient offensively, especially in the second half, and and mm-hmm. couldn't get it done. I mean, FSU's yeah. got a really good defense. They get they have built that team from the portal and mm-hmm. done a good job with it. Yeah, they're a good solid team, and you got to give Mike Norvell and his guys. Oh, gosh, they went twelve and zero. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, not easy to we, do. We had one 11 and 0 in 95, and that's uh, the only one in school history. Do you know that? In I, regular I do season? know that, yeah. And we've never had one that ran the table completely. But uh, anyway, it was a game that was winnable, just like uh, Arkansas, just like Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we still do some stupid things like spitting on a guy. That, that, uh, had, did you ever have that problem with anybody spitting on well, anybody? Well, somebody asked me, what would you do? And I said, I'd jerk him out of the game and uh, leave him out for a while. And then, I don't know, you know, run yeah. the stadium. They did take him something. out, yeah. But, yeah, but uh, and then we had that double uh, hit the quarterback uh, when he slid. You didn't like, yeah. yeah. What about the, mm-hmm. uh, I'm like, you yeah, love trick plays, but mm-hmm. the, the double reverse they ran after they got – Mm-hmm. The safety, and then that was a big issue in that game too. Uh, now everybody's mad because it didn't work, mm-hmm. and it, and it cost some yardage. If it worked, everybody go, oh, what a great Good play, play call, mm-hmm. you know. But that's the way it is with trick plays. Yeah, if if it's a trick play, it doesn't work. Just try to throw it away, and yeah. it's like running up the middle for no gain. So you know, you try to teach you guys, say, let's avoid big losses, uh, and have a place where you can throw it away, uh, something like that. But uh, I tell you the. The tragedy of the year for Auburn University was that last play. That was unbelievable. <laughs> and, and I don't know when they'll get over that. That It'll was – that was almost – I, I, do you think that one mm-hmm. made up for the uh, the kick six where they ran back the, the short field goal for – a? Well, the I game that, was tied on the kick six, I think. Yeah, it was So tied, they yeah. still could have won in overtime. So, yeah. But this time, I mean, Auburn – uh, they had point oh oh one percent. They said of, of winning the game, uh, fourth and goal to thirty. I think there's been ninety times they said in history, no nobody's ever made it. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, there's different philosophies. Uh, what 
I and our teams did on the Hail Mary play, we'd rush five. We rush five Absolutely. and say, don't let Absolutely. him run. If he can't throw it to the end zone, you don't have to worry. If you can hit him while he's throwing it, the ball doesn't get there. But now if it's back there, you, you put a five, five guys across the field and watch the ball. Don't chase guys. And I don't know why these DBs, when they got a zone, it means play your zone and watch the ball, and they chase guys all the time. And that kid from Auburn chased him inside, and he came back, and he's still looking at him when when he was catching the ball, and that was that was sad. Yep. But it, that's the way it happened. But again, Steve, you and I agree mm-hmm. on this 100. Mm-hmm. percent Auburn rushed two, two on that play, mm-hmm. two guys. Because I went back and looked at it, because I'm like, did they they didn't put any pressure on? I looked at it, they they rushed two. Mm-hmm. It is the dumbest thing in sports to rush two on a on a last mm-hmm. play of the game. Because you're saying to the quarterback, mm-hmm. drop back, get comfortable, Run around a find bit. your guy, wait for him. It, you got all the time in the world. It's mm-hmm. just stupid. I, I, well, I they tried to line up a whole bunch of guys across the end zone, but uh, there was one guy responsible for this little yeah, corner, right. and he messed up a little bit. And the Alabama kid made a nice catch. He really did. Gave him a little, like going up for a rebound, gave him a little yep. elbow shoulder as you're going up, and he did it very well. Well, you mentioned that uh, you're going to be up uh, for the Heisman uh, mm-hmm. as well, and um, I'm curious. I'm not going to ask you who your vote is because we're you and I. This is one of the few places mm-hmm. you can go and see two Heisman voters right here. Me and you both. Me and you have a Heisman yeah. vote, yeah. But mm-hmm. I, I've I've kind of gotten mind who I. But I'm going to watch the games yeah. this week, and I always believe that it's a full season mm-hmm. when the votes required, mm-hmm. and that is on Monday, I think, after the after this weekend. After this weekend, yeah, I'll wait then also. Uh, Washington and Oregon will be a heck of a yeah. game. And uh, if one of those guys has a brilliant, spectacular game, uh, then maybe he can he can win it. But uh, Jalen Daniels, as far as uh, an individual season, yep. he has really had a great year. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, I'm not asking you to give your vote, but, I mean, Jane Daniels isn't playing this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other two guys are playing in a monumental game, and it's going to be a big deal, and it's going to get all the attention. Mm-hmm. I, I hope that voters aren't lazy enough to just go, well, that's – whoever wins this game is going to be the guy. But it's going to have an effect on my vote, you know, mm-hmm. who who wins that game. And if, if Michael Penix does great mm-hmm. things, uh, you know, if Bo yeah. Nix does great things and they win that game and now they're in the playoff, mm-hmm. then it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think most all the voters will wait and watch. Yeah. And uh, if those games are defensive battles – then I would say Jalen Daniels might be the favorite, but if one of them has a you know a super game, got a chance to win it. Yeah, speaking of awards, you've got your first year coach coming mm-hmm. up uh, award, and uh, mm-hmm. I know that's going to be interesting. And the guy who mm-hmm. I think was the leading candidate didn't have a good good weekend, Jeff Brom. <laughs> well, he lost yeah yeah the in state battle, uh, <laughs> but he's playing for the ACC championship yeah. this week, and uh, if somebody said you can have one or the other, I'd take the conference championship certainly. But uh, so anyway, they, uh, Louisville's had a, a excellent year. They've lost two. They're sitting there ten and two. That's pretty right, good. Yeah. So uh, if they win their conference, that'd be ec- excellent season. I thought about that during that game mm-hmm. when that game was over. I said, you know, Jeff Brom should call Steve and say, no, no. how did you get your team back in '96 to to play that conference mm-hmm. championship game? Which is it's not easy when you've lost mm-hmm. a big in state, and especially with all that was on the line that day. Mm-hmm. I mean, there wasn't as much on the line with Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville isn't going to win the national title anyway. But with, in your case, it was really mm-hmm. hard because you had to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Well, every year we set our goals. One of them's to win the division, win the SEC. And win the national. Uh, So we didn't, after we lost at FSU, hey, that national is out. Don't worry about it. Let's go beat Alabama and (laughs) get another SEC. Uh, That was what we were thinking. And then all the thing, all the games started falling in line and we were playing FSU for the rematch uh, for the national. So that's how that worked out. But I, I, I emphasize the conference more than the national. Yeah, I you just, did. I mean, we're, did. we're yeah. playing FSU. We played them 14 times. They're in the top five in the nation, 13 of the 14. Yeah. And then they start deciding who plays for the national after that game. And uh, we knocked them out some, and they knocked us out some. So it, it, it's hard to play a very, very difficult s- schedule like we had back in those days and, and try to get in the national game. Uh, we did get in two of them, 1-1. Sure. So yeah. uh, we, we're 50%. 
That's not bad. There was a moment during that Florida FSU game Saturday night where I said, this almost feels like 97 again, where they're, mm-hmm. they're hanging in there, yeah. you know. I mean, you being at the game, you probably felt the same thing. Yeah, Noah Brandeis called me. Uh, <laughs> how we're doing, Coach? Come up to the box if you can see us. And he said, Doug's up here with me. Uh, so yeah. Doug Johnson and Noah Brandeis are two alternating coordinators, uh, quarterbacks from the – only time the Gators beat the number one team in the nation, 1997 FSU. So I'm sure that they had some fond memories of that night, and uh, that's why I used to tell our guys, man, we got memories of a lifetime if we get it. If we sneak it up and don't win it, uh, we, we don't have any memories. So, that's right, uh, yeah. That's, that's what we're doing now. We're in that memory uh, situation. Well, and memories aren't great mm-hmm. right now because obviously mm-hmm. Florida's had three straight losing seasons and not fun. But mm-hmm. um, I, I do see some things to be optimistic about. And uh, But obviously one of them is that they've got to clean up the discipline problems. I mean, they can't have mm-hmm. 90 yards and penalties in the mm-hmm. last game of the year. And I know that. Yeah, Steve, you had to deal with this. Guys <laughs> get really excited mm-hmm. about that game, mm-hmm. the famous game in 98 when – they, you lost Tony George, and they lost a guy in jeans, right? <laughs> because they got thrown out of the game before. Mm-hmm. But you've got to just be yeah. disciplined about your anger, I guess, is the best mm-hmm. way to put it. Uh, well, I don't know what exactly uh, Billy's going to do, but uh, uh, everything with the special teams has not been very good. And, and a little bit disciplined, jumping off sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we we got to correct those things. And uh, we've got a good recruiting class still online right now. Uh, these guys – uh, they, they might get a better offer somewhere else. So y- yeah, you never know. They're not yours yeah. until they sign, uh, which is early signing days in December sometime, right? Yep. So hopefully we can maintain that number three or four recruiting class we got. Yeah, I want to ask you about this too. We'll get to our uh, mm-hmm. Campus USA Play of the Weekend in just mm-hmm. a minute. Um, but um, mm-hmm. I, I did want to ask you about, um, you know, just ha- – how you deal with guys now. I mean, you, you're not dealing with yeah. them now, but let's say a guy does something, mm-hmm. makes a, a bad penalty, does something stupid, and you bring him over and you're like, if I yell at him too much, he lose. may get in the portal. So I got I, uh, I got to be like a dad yeah. to him. And I, I saw that with mm-hmm. Napier and uh, Lyons, mm-hmm. who was a guy who spit at somebody, which I've never – ever in my life spit at anybody in my life, yeah. 69 years. But, yeah. but I mean. I was, I was saying about that the other day. Uh, they asked Kevin Carter in 92, we, we lost uh, at Tennessee and at Mississippi State. We were actually one and two. And somebody asked Kevin, what what did you guys do to turn it around? He said, well, the first thing, we got back. And uh, Monday at the Monday meeting, Coach said, we're all going to meet here at 630 and run the stadium steps tomorrow and see if we can get some guys that really want to play. If, you don't, if you're not here and you want to quit, that's fine. Go ahead. And uh, everybody's there, and we, we did the stadium steps all the way around, and uh, that's what we did. And, yeah. uh, and then we won seven in a row. Yeah, exactly. Nowadays, if, if you did that, now it's, they, everybody half, gets of, in the portal. half of them may not show up. <laughs> they might say, I'm out of here. I'm in the portal, coach. Heck with that stadium steps, 6.30 in the morning. But, yeah, we, uh, we when it was going bad, all right, 6.30 in the morning, here we go. And uh, coaches, we'd be there with them. Yep. Uh, walking, walking the steps a little bit, but uh, yeah, I don't know if they still. I don't think they do that anymore. No. Uh, but that's how we did it. Well, yeah, yeah I hated to see uh, Jonathan Odom gone in the mm-hmm. uh, portal, and which I can't blame him. He, he wasn't did? playing. Yeah, he just wasn't playing. He'd been hurt mm-hmm. and everything, mm-hmm. and he probably wants to try it somewhere else. But yeah, you hate uh, to see him leave. You know, he he's yeah. obviously a legacy player. We've had Jason on the show very several times, and mm-hmm. good dude. Oh, I've always liked guy. that guy forever. Mm-hmm. But hey, you know I don't blame Jonathan. I don't blame a guy like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and they're going to lose some guys in the mm-hmm. portal. It's just the way it is. It's the way college yeah. football is. Today. Yeah, you lose some and, and then pick some up. I guess is how they do it now. All right, who do you like in the Alabama Georgia game? Well, I think Georgia has pl- is right now playing a little better. Yeah. But obviously, I thought Alabama would beat Auburn by two or three touchdowns <laughs> after Auburn lost to New Mexico State. <clears throat> So it's uh, it's obviously a game that uh, could go either way, uh, but I tell you what, you got to give Georgia a shout out. Yeah, they've gone three seasons in a row undefeated. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And, yeah. and lost one uh, SEC game two years ago. Uh, yeah, that, that's been amazing. Now their schedule's not quite as tough as everybody else's, but still, yeah, that's, but it's still that's pretty doggone yeah. good. Yeah, you just keep winning those games, and that's that's mm-hmm. the key to it. I mean, it certainly is. 
uh, it's pretty amazing how good they so are. I'm, I'm going to take Georgia, but then again. I think Alabama's getting <coughs> five, maybe, um, mm-hmm. points. But, yeah, I, I don't yeah. think that's going to be a big difference. Yep. But we'll see how that game goes. And, obviously, uh, Florida needs to get to where that point where they're Sunday. playing – they're back mm-hmm. in Atlanta. I mean, that's that's the number one goal right now. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's get to our Campus USA play of the weekend, and it had nothing to do with the Gators. This had to do with... But there's a lot of, of airspace to cover for Milro. Still looking. Fire no rush. Near <laughs> corner. <laughs> that's and a crowd rush. No. Yeah. And uh, Isaiah Bond, mm. who, has, they, of course, they loved that a guy named Bond caught it because they were like, Bond, Isaiah Bond. You know, Nestler had fun with that. Can you imagine the depression level of Auburn fans who think? Mm-hmm. Oh, they're crying. Yeah, they're crying. That would have been, oh, that would have been a huge uh, win for Auburn. Going into recruiting, going into everything. I mean, it just uh, that was a heartbreaker for them. But you, again, you can't see the just Auburn let, player. He yeah. hadn't, hadn't seen the ball yet. <laughs> just following him around. There. You can't just let the quarterback sit back there and, and just wait and until even, he gets. You know, if he just got interference there, like the guy said. But yeah. I guess he's not close enough to get interference. <laughs> they would just had a 15-yard penalty and try it again. Uh, but, yeah, if, if you got a rush to where he, uh, he, he can't throw it in the end zone, uh, then usually you don't have to worry too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so we got any other awards coming up for you? I mean, going on. I mean, we, we you're going to the uh, Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, and then the Heisman's right after that. Heisman's so, after that. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jerry and I have been doing that for who 35, 40 years almost. So uh, even, uh, and of course, it was always fun when uh, Danny Warfel and his uh, parents, and we b- took the whole coaching staff up there for his uh, uh, when he was put in the Hall of Heisman. Uh, Ceremony when he won the Heisman. Yeah, he had no, no Hall of Fame to that. But uh, yeah, we, we did. We that. actually mm-hmm. went. We got invited mm-hmm. back to his uh, party, and uh, uh-huh. Dave Shine and sang for him. Oh, Danny Boy. Danny Boy. I don't know if you remember Dave, right? yeah. Dave Shiner from the um, mm-hmm. Miami Herald. He yeah. was an mm-hmm. operatically trained singer, and he mm-hmm. sang "Oh Danny Boy" for him, and they Danny loved boy. it. And good. and Danny had the great line because he turned to me and he goes, "I knew one of you guys had talent." <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's all we got. <laughs> yeah, Danny Warfel, he had a brilliant career here. So many guys did. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get back to being, you know, right there in the top fighting for those championships. But, uh, gosh, these other schools are making some ground up. When you look at Ole Miss and Missouri going 10-2, and two, and it wasn't easy for either one of them to do that either. I, so, I so. did want to ask you about Mike Elko, who's mm-hmm. leaving Duke now for, for uh, Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have any relationship with him or, or not, but obviously he was a Duke and mm-hmm. um, and did a really good job there. He was at A&M prior. Yeah, he was, he was at A&M before, and, yeah. And got the Duke job and did an excellent job there. Gosh, they were 9-4 and four last year. They're 7-5 and five right now. Right. So, I mean, you have a winning record at Duke. It's hard. There's you know us. that. <laughs> There's very few of us that have left there with a winning record. So uh, I know Carl Bob yeah, didn't. <laughs> I think he's an, he's an excellent uh, choice. and uh, So he knows A&M, and uh, I, I think he'll do well there. I really do. That's the question, though. What is doing well mm-hmm. now? Is, like, is doing, doing well, well – you have to almost mm-hmm. get in the playoffs to say you had a good season. Well, winning S- SEC, yeah. uh, they're capable. I mean, you got to beat LSU and Alabama over there. Uh, but not anymore. Point. Now you have no division. So you just have to finish in the top well, two, right? Top two. Yeah. Okay, but well, we've got to beat a lot of people. Texas, Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, but they seem to split up Texas and Oklahoma, who they're playing. Uh, yeah, it's going to so be anyway. so weird next year with no divisions. I hate it. I yeah. actually yeah, – I had, agree. We had Greg yeah. Sankey on uh, the show uh, on – what was that, Thursday? Mm-hmm. Wednesday. We had our special Thanksgiving 300th episode mm-hmm. show. And I, I asked him, I said, to be honest with you, I hate it. I hate going away from divisions. You kept fans interested mm-hmm. longer with division. Heck, yeah. Than yeah. you do with no mm-hmm. divisions. Because yeah. now mm-hmm. somebody's going to mm-hmm. finish 16th. Mm-hmm. You know what? They're going to get fired. That's the, And, you know, right. the guy who finishes 15th probably will get fired, too. Well, if he's been there a while. Yeah. yeah it's, that's just the way it is. Uh, how about – the Carolina Panthers fired their coach. <laughs> 11 days, 11 games. Matt Rule was there, what, two years and got canned, and yep. he was there one year and got canned. And most of these guys got four- or five-year contracts. You know that? Let me but tell you what. Care. They just pay them off and Steve, go. Steve, you thought yep. Daniel Snyder was a bad owner. 
This the guy, guy, yeah. He's got, uh, I think he said six coaches in four years or something like that. He just fires, fires, yeah, fires, yeah, fires, fires, yeah. fires. Whoever, whoever doesn't, mm-hmm. you don't win, fire. Yeah. And I thought that was a perfect matchup of Bryce Young and Frank Reich. I thought that was going to yeah, work. Yeah, could have been. And it hadn't worked, mm-hmm. but I don't know, 11 games seems like a early mm-hmm. fire. Yeah, they're all pretty close in NFL, and that maybe why yeah. it's so popular because they, you know, the best players, uh, one team can't just get all the best players. Yep, it, it, exactly. But you, you do a good job re- scouting and drafting and, and, and coaching your team up. Uh, yep. the, the good coaches uh, like uh, Kansas City, Andy Reid, I think he could easily be considered the best up there now. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So, but there's a lot, of, a lot of good coaches and maybe a lot of average. And <laughs> Anyway. Yep, absolutely. All right, Coach, we'll let you go. We'll be back with a little Robbie Andrew for Yes, Nowhere, Maybe, brought to you by Big Mills Cheese Steak. Of course, this segment is always brought to you, Melvin Law, Melvin yep. Law Mondays. And, uh, Coach, always, have yeah. fun up there. Huh? I have always fun. want to encourage the Gators. Uh, Billy Napier is going to be our coach next yeah. year. Oh, we absolutely. Don't need to yeah. let's, uh, let's support him. And what a great crowd we had there Saturday night. Fantastic. Screaming, yelling. I know a lot of Seminoles were there, too. Yep. But uh, we had our share of the audience, and uh, our fans did their part. Uh, we just didn't get it done on the field. Well, and that's the interesting thing yeah. is fans are showing up. Mm-hmm. You, I think it's a little bit of a post-COVID bu- uh, bump and that fans mm-hmm. realize how much they miss going to games when they couldn't go in 2020. Yeah. And so now, now they're going mm-hmm. all the time. Uh, but nine sellouts in two years for a losing team, a, a losing team that's team. had a losing record. That's exactly So right. imagine what it's going to be like if they, they can get start back. Start winning. Yeah, yep, start yeah. winning. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see if they can do mm-hmm. that. All right, Coach, right. always great to see mm-hmm. you. We'll see you in a couple of weeks since you won't be here next mm-hmm. Monday. But we'll, we look forward to that. Until then, mm-hmm. that'll be. Uh, we'll take a break. That's what we'll do. We'll yeah. take a break. We'll come back with more of another mm-hmm. Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. All right. Titan MRI, North Central Florida's premier independent diagnostic testing MRI facility. At Titan MRI, we're focused on you, the patient, having a great customer experience. Our MRI equipment is modern and 75% quieter than any unit in its class. And our MRI unit has one of the largest openings of any of the newer high strength MRI units, which allows comfortable scanning for potential claustrophobic and larger patients. At Titan MRI, we look forward to serving you. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com i was driving behind a lady and very suddenly she moved out of the way there was a log laying in the road and when i hit my brakes i went on top of the log i had 280 discs i just haven't been the same since jeffrey melden fought for me all the way him and his team really went there for me Throughout the whole lawsuit, he made sure that my bills was paid. It was never no whenever I called him and asked him for something. Call Melden Law right now. Okay, and welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Gator Studios. Here at Steve Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, it's always great we can bring in a legend. And instead, <laughs> we're going to bring in Robbie Andrew to talk about his great trip to the mountains for Thanksgiving. How, did you have a good time? Oh, we had a blast, uh, Pat. We had a great cabin up on the top of a mountain. It was beautiful. Tough coming home. Well, come on, man. You live here. You can, you, you, there's <laughs> people you're going to have to talk to. You can't, oh, it's yeah. tough coming home. Oh. <laughs> like I said the other day, he came home to flat Florida after being in the mountains. It's not, yeah. kind of depressing. It, it is different, yeah, here in Florida. But, you know, we also uh, don't have to worry about it's winter. where we live, though. We have yeah. a three-day winter, so, I mean, that's a good thing. Um, obviously, um, things didn't go the way everybody thought they would on Saturday night, and, um, you know, it was a weird weekend for college football. I saw some of the damnedest things, and, and in fact, 
Robbie, called, when I was talking to Robbie yesterday, he goes, why did Auburn rush two people? And I'm like, <laughs> duh. I mean, I don't know why you and I are so wrong and all college coaches are so right that they know never rush, never blitz on a Hail Mary, never rush a lot of guys on a, a, a fourth and 31. Never do that. We're right. You're wrong. I think we're right. Yeah, and Pat, I'll say one thing. In the Missouri game, if Florida had blitzed somebody on that fourth and 17, the Gators would be bowl eligible right now. So right. that's another example of rushing three and getting not getting the job done. It's, and rushing two, no chance. I mean, look, I see it work on the NFL level because they've got pro football players there. And they can they can get to the quarterback. Uh, that's what they're 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 paid to do. So anyway, it is time for us on the uh, Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom line to play our favorite game. Yes, nowhere maybe with Robbie Andrew last week. Robbie, uh, we had Chris or uh, Jeff Cardozo on, and he did he did really well. He actually came in studio, so that was pretty exciting. No, he did. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll come Wait. in if you want me to. All right. Well, no, it's, hey, why put you out at, in any way? Um, it is brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak. Yes, nowhere, maybe, as always is. Uh, street dining done the right way if you want to go in there and get uh, your meal and say, hey, I'll listen to another duly noted podcast. You get free fries with your order. All right. Number one, Robbie, you are glad it's over. I'm talking about yes, I am, football Pat. season. <laughs> yeah, I am, Pat. It's been it's just been a, a a tough year to get through. I mean, they came so close in a few games where they were looked like they may get it done, but they just can't couldn't get over the hump. And you have to wonder has Florida forgotten how to win football games? And I mean, that's where they're at right now. They can't finish a game. They couldn't finish the Missouri game. Couldn't finish the Arkansas game. Fell completely flat in the fourth quarter against FSU. So they don't know how to win football games right now. And that's something they've got to get back somehow. Yeah, I know, and I and that's the thing, Robbie. I mean, they have um, – I am glad it's over too uh, because they always gave you hope and then always let you down, it felt like. Like, they were leading in the second half of their last, what, four games and lost them. Yeah. Ball. Yeah, it's just you got you to gotta know how to win. Some coaches have got – teach their guys how to win, and right now he hasn't been able to do that. Yeah, sometimes they can't, they can't close a game. Sometimes it's personnel, but I mean, I thought in this game they had a chance uh, without. I mean, just by having a good. I think they had a good game plan at the start of the game, and then the second half uh, it was like FSU adjusting, and that was it. They were done. It, yeah, but the it. thing is, Pat, they lost. They lost momentum in the in the first half. You know, after the safety doing that trick play that blew up in their face, that kind of helped change the momentum. Then the spitting penalty. You could tell tell the game was going to get away from them, and it did. Well, and that's the point, and that's where people get mad. It wasn't that FSU changed the momentum; it was that Florida changed the momentum. Yeah, so in the wrong and way. And they've done they've done that. They've done that a lot this year. All right, yeah. let's get to number two, Robbie. I don't know if you saw that volleyball is hosting a regional. Florida gets. I mean, they've had a rough year. We know that uh, losing Alyssa Stuckey early, and that's just set them back terribly, but um, uh, volleyball gets out of the first weekend, which me would mean they'd have to win two games. No, I'm going to say yes on that, Pat, and you're right. It has been a tough year, and that injury has been kind of crippling to them, and they struggled down the stretch. But I think being at home and Mary Wise will have a plan, I, I think they'll get get to the next round and get, get out of here with two wins and move on. Yeah, they're playing a Florida Gulf Coast team that's – one twenty six games. So I mean, it, you you got. I know play. it's gonna be it's gonna be gonna be a challenge, Pat. No it's question tough. about it. Yeah, uh, this is like the. I cannot. Alyssa Stuckey must be the best volleyball player in the world. <laughs> really, because, it's made a big difference. But I mean, I've never seen a Florida team with a record like this, or the losses they are having. Uh, and I know it was important, but it, the, she must be she must be the player. I would make her the player of the year, even though she didn't play. Very much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Pat. All right, and finally, number three on our Big Mills cheesesteak, yes, nowhere, maybe with the great Robbie Andrew. You want Alabama to beat Georgia, even though it could mean the SEC has no team in the college football playoff. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say maybe, Pat. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of torn on this one. 
I mean, I, I respect the, the job that Kirby Smart has done at Georgia. I mean, they look so much better than any other team in the country right now. To me, they're so complete. They're balanced. They're good on offense, defense, special teams. So you have to admire what he's done at Georgia. And I mean, I don't see them slowing down anytime soon. I mean, yeah, they could win four I, or five in a row. I, I know. I know. I mean, obviously, they have a quarterback. It's, they, they just – it's almost like cookie cutter. They move him right in. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's all that skill, but uh, they they set him up for a good offense, and uh, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. All right, so it, who are you picking in that game? But I, I think Georgia's going to win. But and I tend to pull for the underdog pat like you do, so I'll I'll root for Alabama just because I like the underdog to win. Yeah, I it hasn't done well for us lately. For some reason, yeah, and that's why I've rooted for Florida all year because they've been an underdog every week. Uh, uh, they were favorites against McNeese. So you were you rooting yeah, for McNeese and Charlotte? Yeah, I kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Robbie, always great to talk to you, and uh, glad you, you had too, a great Pat. Thanksgiving. And we'll see you next week, okay, buddy? Okay, we'll see you soon. See you, Pat. All right, the great Robbie Andrew. Joining us on Yes, No Way, or Maybe. Okay, and uh, always great to have Robbie on the show. Uh, it was great to have Jeff Cardozo last week, too. And uh, They kind of alternate depending on who's in town and everything, but for Yes, No Way, or Maybe. Uh, let's get to our Adam Dripco to go Gator of the Weekend. And um, I decided to go with Kennedy Martin. Kennedy Martin's been the Gator of the Week and Gator of the Weekend before. Uh, has had a great freshman year. And that's what we talked about Mary Wise uh, earlier. Uh, That's what she's going to build on. But she made all SEC first team. I know there's like 90 people on the all. No, it's not that many. It's like 12 on the all SEC first team. And also the all SEC freshman team, which obviously she would make. But Kennedy Martin had a great year. Um, Weird, because I was looking at the, the, how they ended up with the poll. Uh, Four coaches of the year. Now that's that, that's not coaches of the year. Then you can't be coaches of the year when you have four people that are coaches of the year. That's that's coach of the year. It should be called. I, I can understand occasionally, occasionally two people get it, but not four. Come on, man, that's weak. But anyway, that I I don't want to get in the way of Kennedy Martin being our uh, Adam Dribko to go Gator of the weekend. And thanks to Adam Brewer for the great job he and Michelle do over there at Adams Ripco to go. It's a staple for us. I know that. And we love them. Uh, They've been such great sponsors for us. Let's get to another great sponsor, our Leonardo's at Mill Hopper Quick Picks. Kyle Cohen over at Leonardo's. We appreciate him so much. Uh, We're going to make it simple for you this week. There's no spread on it because it is weird. I don't know why basketball. I think I talk about this every year, but... uh, I'm going to do it again. They don't put the spreads out till the day of the game. So uh, I don't know what the spread is on Florida at Wake Forest. I'll just tell you that Wake Forest is 3-3. Three and three. They've lost to two SEC teams already. It doesn't appear that they have a great team, uh, but it's at Winston-Salem, which I used to call the town that looked like it was hit by a neutron bomb because there were no people and they're just buildings. I mean, that was the only time I was there. I was there for five days for the Mike Miller shot, actually, uh, which was cool. In fact, I should have made that my uh, Pat Dooley story time. Um, I'll, maybe I'll make it next week. Anyway, Florida is playing at Wake Forest. Simple. Florida, Wake Forest, that's all you got to write down, and you can qualify. We'll have a, another drawing very soon, per, believe me, before well before Christmas. Let's put it that way. All right, let's get to our he- – that uh, was brought to you by Leonardo's and Millhopper Quick Picks. Let's get to our Adam Dribko. Uh, let's get let's can we edit that out? Let's get to our Hesser and Kipke three things. Time for that. Our good friend Ken Hesser and I were texting back and forth all weekend. Um, it was he's he's a good dude, man. Love him. Uh, let's get to our Hesser and Kipke three things. Brought to you by Hesser and Kipke, a Gainesville law firm which specializes in the areas of workers' compensation and family law. Ken and Jennifer take great pride in their one-to-one focus on each and every client they represent. Ken is board certified in workers' compensation law by the Florida Bar. While Jennifer possesses an extensive jury trial experience with a nearly 20-year background as a prosecutor, 
Don't believe me? Well, check out their five-star Google reviews. Set an appointment at hklawfl.com. Or better yet, give them a call at 352-339-9920. Hesser and Kipke. Appreciate them as one of our main sponsors, and they've been great to us for a long time. Let's start off with number one, and that is the uh, coaching carousel we're dealing with in college football. The weird part of it being what happened with uh, Mark Stoops. Mark Stoops apparently was offered the job on Sunday, uh, but they but the Bjork, the uh, AD at, at Texas A and M, said, "Hey, look, I still got to go take it to the board." When he took it to the board, the board went, "No." Nah. No, we don't like that hire. And uh, the next day, they hire they hire Mike Elko. Mark Stoops apparently went back to his people and said, "Why am I leaving? I don't know why I'm leaving. Why I don't know why I want to step in." Whatever he said, or it could have been he just went, "Oh, they're not going to hire me. Let me withdraw my name. Who cares?" Either way, I think Mike Elko is a better hire. Um, it's a dangerous hire for a lot of people in the SEC because. The guy knows what he's doing. He's a really good coach. However, he's a defensive guy, and uh, I think they wanted to get away from an offensive guy, which they, you know, it's it's what you'd always do. But Elko knows the climate there. He's was a coach there, um, and of course uh, Mississippi State also hiring Jeff Levy, uh, good offensive coordinator. We'll see how, what kind of head coach he is. Uh, but you know, those both teams Florida plays next year, so. Uh, that's interesting that they now know who they're going to be facing. Uh, let's get to number two on the Hesser and Kipke three things, and that is, I know that uh, Ken will like this, but the Eagles made their fourth comeback in a row on Sunday. I think it broke the NFL record for consecutive comebacks. A team's unbelievable. I, 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 it's so weird for me. I like teams based on the season that is going on. I don't have a team. Like for a while, I really liked the Hawks, the Seahawks. I was really into. I liked Pete Carroll. I liked that it was a college kind of atmosphere, and I kind of fell off of them. And I and for a while, I liked Green Bay, and then Aaron Rodgers kind of made me fall off of him for some things he did. But anyway, I only like I I like the Chiefs a lot. I love Pat Mahomes. I love watching him play. They're probably my favorite team. I do like the Eagles a lot because I love Jalen Hurts. I kind of, whoever has a quarterback that I really like to watch play, that's who I root for. Anyway, uh, you got to give them credit. Four straight comeback wins. They know how to win games. And finally, number three on the Hester and Kipke, three things. First firing of the NFL. Wait a minute, is it the first one? Uh, McDaniels from McDaniels. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so second one. Yep. Feels like there may have been a third one. But anyway, this was a big one because Frank Reich, when he went to um, Carolina, we all thought, ooh, this will be good. Bryce Young's in it. They're going to who, – whoever they get is going to be war- good. Now, we had no idea Bryce Young was going to be that much lower on the spectrum than C.J. Stroud uh, in terms of playing. But um, And you, if you watch the Jaguar game on Sunday, I mean, C.J. Stroud almost pulled that off. He's, he's really good. I, I don't think Bryce Young is that bad. I just it just it wasn't working out. Now their owner is a nut and he fires people every chance he gets, but it is what it is. Um, so second coach, right, to be fired. Yep, and Steelers fired their offensive coordinator. They is yeah. There's been a lot of coordinator yeah, fires. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for straightening me in on that, Zach, because I tend to screw up. I, I, there's so much going on in this brain. So that is our Hesser and Kipke. Three things. Let's get to our Gainesville Quarterback Club great picks. Coach Spurrier was awesome last Tuesday. Loved him. Uh, no meeting this week, and then the following week we'll have our uh, holiday um, extravaganza where we will honor the coaches and players of the year for high school sports and also give a, a trophy out to the team uh, that wins the uh, high school city championship. So I'm uh, looking forward to that as well. That's next week, not this week. This week, I've got Tuesday night off. Um, but our Gainesville, and we appreciate the Gainesville Quarterback Club for everything they do. Uh, so we're going to give you the Friday night games today. Uh, there's two of them. 
We'll see how I do. But I will say this. I've been doing pretty good lately, but not great. I think I am plus 10 right now on the quarterback club picks. Somewhere around there. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to the two games for this week. And that is New Mexico State at Liberty. Now, Liberty's getting 10 and a half. And that makes... uh, New Mexico State's a team that knocked off Auburn which almost knocked off uh, Alabama, which makes me kind of wondering. But I think Liberty's really good. I'm going to take Liberty. I'm going to regret this. I know I am. I should never bet against the Jerry Kill team. But I'm going to take Liberty and giving the 10.5 points. And the other big game, Friday night, obviously huge. Oregon's given 9.5 to Washington. I'm taking Washington. Don't even... Don't even ask me about this one. Washington is going to come within nine and a half. I promise you that. These guys play tough, hard-nosed football. They're in every game. They always pull them out at the end. I'm not saying they're going to win, but you give me nine and a half points in Washington, I'm taking it every single time. I mean, it's not home field, although I guess Oregon may send more people to Vegas than Washington does. But those are my Gainesville quarterback club. Great picks. Let's get to our Swamp Games of the Week. Um, And we're going to give you a lot of games here, but we're not going to give you the weekend games because we'll do that on Thursday. The Games of the Week. And again, if you go to the Swamp Restaurant, what a great time it is. Love it there. Uh, Everybody does. And they have so many specials going on, all their drinks. And this is a good weekend to go. You don't have to worry about the Gators anymore. Basketball-wise, you still need to worry about them, but don't worry about the Gators football team anymore uh, this year. So just go there and enjoy football. There's so many great games on, and we'll give you all the weekend games later on Thursday's show. But, for example, Florida, Wake Forest, uh, Wednesday, 7.15 p.m. I like Steve Forbes, their coach. I like him a lot. I interviewed him when he was at East Tennessee State. Really good dude. Uh, I'll be rooting against him on Wednesday night. But Wednesday, 7-15, ESPNU. That's where you'll find the game, on the U, okay? Uh, The women also are playing against Georgia Tech. They're separate, obviously, but they're still an ACC-SEC challenge. They they are playing at 5 o'clock on the ACC network. So we will not have a radio show Wednesday because the women will be playing at 5 o'clock on the ACC network against Georgia Tech. Volleyball, uh, 4.30 and 7 are the games. Florida plays at 7. I I haven't seen a TV announcement yet. I don't know if it'll be on TV, so we'll keep an eye on that. We'll hopefully be able to give you a better idea on Wednesday, but they play, I mean, I'm sorry, on Thursday, but they play on Thursday. We'll we'll do the best we can. NFL, Monday night game tonight. Chicago at Minnesota, 8.15 on ABC. I think I have to watch it because I think my fantasy team has a nice lead, but he's got Josh Dobbs and Jordan Addison. They could light me up. All I've got left is uh, I'm trying to remember. I got one guy left. He probably won't do anything. Anyway, uh, Chicago and Minnesota, if you're interested in that game, 815 on ABC. And then the Thursday night game, Seattle at Dallas on Prime Video at 815. Um, it, there's some interest level there. I, Dallas is unbelievable. I, you know, I picked Dak Prescott as my fantasy quarterback, and I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to play fantasy football. And Dak Prescott, I I root against the Cowboys, but now I'm rooting for him because I got him on my fantasy team, and that's why I didn't want to do it. But he got 40 points for me, so I love him. I'm conflicted here. All right, let's get to to wrap it up. Our uh, Pat Dooley story time brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics. We appreciate Mike Jordan and the folks at East Lake Pediatrics. Um, all right, the story I'm going to tell today involves Coach Spurrier because I was thinking about this how in the old days you could pick up a phone and talk to a guy, a coach. I can't pick up the phone and talk to Billy Napier, I don't have his phone number. Nobody's ever optioned that to me. Uh, very rarely talked to Dan Mullen, texted him a few times, uh, rarely to McElwain on the phone. I, I have to go all the way back, really. I mean, yeah, Zook a little bit, Urban a little bit, 
But really, with Spurrier, you would just pick up the phone and dial his extension. All right? <laughs> so this is what I loved about that time. And, and, and I do want to make this point. It's a bad time to be a Gator football fan. It, maybe they've hit rock bottom. Maybe they haven't. I don't know. I hope they've hit rock bottom. But I still want to make sure everybody understands how grateful I am to have gone through the good times. Because people that are just getting on board, just starting school maybe. Now, my daughter's very lucky in that she got to live through the good times of Urban. She didn't get to live through the good times of Steve. She was too young. Um, but anyway... So I called Spurrier one day, and I, I was like, I think I've been calling him too much lately. But, uh, but there was something going on, and I said, well, let me call him anyway. And I called him up, and he said, this is the exact quote. He goes, Pat Dilly, you're calling again? You looking for some scoop? And I'm like, yeah, you got any? No, I don't, I don't have any scoop. I don't know why you keep calling me looking for scoop. And I'm like, well, because you know more than anybody. That's the bottom line. And that is our Pat Dooley story time. It was a very short one, but I, I'll never forget that. In fact, we use this as a catchphrase in our family. When, you looking for some scoop? Um, like when you go to get ice cream. Hey, you looking for some scoop? So, uh, but I appreciate him. Best ever. Best coach in Florida history. Best podcast guest. And another duly noted history as well. Uh, we appreciate him. All right, that's going to do it. Zach, a great job as usual. Put up with me and um, did a great job. And we'll be back with another show Thursday. Brandon Spike's going to join us. I can't wait for that. We'll have a lot of fun with him. And then uh, we'll go on to next week. We, we're not sure who Monday's guest is, but the following Thursday, Chris Harry's going to join us. We'll keep coming with the guests. Keep coming with the good guests and keep coming with the great commentary. I hope that you guys enjoy it. And hopefully you guys stay with us. Even though football season's over, there's a lot of football to play, just not by the Gators. Until next time, I am Pat Dooley. I am deep, I'm way back, and I am out of here.